Before we start this video, we would first like to thank everybody for helping us make this very special video. David Ortiz, this is for you. On behalf of National Baseball Hall of Fame Chairman Jane Forbes Clark, our board of directors, the entire staff here in Cooperstown, and Jack O'Connell of the Baseball Writers Association of America, it is my honor to announce the results of the 2022 BBWAA Hall of Fame election. Our final member of the 2022 class is a feared slugger who performed his best on the biggest stage, winning three world championships. Today, David Ortiz becomes the fourth Dominican-born member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Well, he did it. Every July, the National Baseball Hall of Fame inducts new members that are voted upon by the Baseball Writers Association of America. In no later than December 31st of every year should members of the Baseball Writers Association of America return their ballots for the National Baseball Hall of Fame. This year, on January 25th, the BBWAA announced the results of its 2022 National Baseball Hall of Fame vote. This year, in 2022, seven new members will be inducted into the Hall of Fame on July 24th. And those seven members will be Bud Fowler, Gil Hodges, Jim Catt, Minnie Minoso, Tony Oliva, Buck O'Neill, and Boston Red Sox legend David Ortiz. Ortiz received 77.9% of the vote from the baseball writers, meeting the 75% minimum requirement, thus being the sole player elected by the writers to the Hall in 2022. While Ortiz's Hall of Fame induction isn't officially until Sunday, we here at Grandstand Productions thought we would kick off the Hall of Fame festivities on a, on a Saturday and honor Big Poppy in a way that only Red Sox fans would know how. So hi, this is Noah from Grandstand Productions, and today we're going to be recapping the entire career of the soon-to-be Major League Baseball Hall of Famer David Ortiz, and we're also going to be hearing some thoughts on Big Poppy from some other awesome Red Sox media groups. Before we get into the baseball playing career of David Ortiz, we're first going to give a little backstory about Ortiz and how he ended up with the Minnesota Twins. Ortiz was born with an easygoing personality that allowed him to make friends readily, and baseball was big in his household, with his hero being Red Sox legend Pedro Martinez. Ortiz was a standout in both basketball and baseball in high school, which led him to sign an MLB contract with the team. Before David Ortiz became an all-time fan favorite Red Sox, some people don't know that Ortiz wasn't always on the Red Sox. Believe it or not, Ortiz was signed by the Seattle Mariners as an amateur in November of 1992 but he never actually played a game for Seattle. The reason for this is because in 1996, he was traded to the Minnesota Twins to complete a deal for Dave Hollins. That year, Ortiz was named Minnesota's Minor League Player of the Year after starting the year in Class A and finishing the year in the big leagues, where we will then start by recapping the Twins phase of David Ortiz's career. The first year that Ortiz saw big league action was in 1997 at only 21 years old. Ortiz appeared in only 15 games for the Twins in 1997, and he had posted just 51 plate appearances that year. In those 51 plate appearances, Ortiz hit for a 327 average, hitting just one home run and adding six RBIs. Ortiz reached base at a 353 clip in 1997, and he had walked just two times while striking out 19 times. Since David only played in 15 games in 1997, his technical rookie year would be in 1998, where in 1998, he appeared in 80 games for the Twins. In those 80 games for Minnesota in 1998, Ortiz posted 326 plate appearances for the team, and in those 326 plate appearances, David hit for a 277 average, hitting 9 home runs and driving in 46 runs. David reached base at a 371 percentage for the Twins in the 1998 season, and he had walked 39 times while striking out 72 times. Ortiz followed up his 1997 season with more appearances in 1998, but a wrist injury which limited his availability limited Ortiz to only 10 games in 1999. In his third season with the Twins, Ortiz, as mentioned, only appeared in 10 games for the team, and in those 10 games, he only posted 25 plate appearances. In those 25 plate appearances, Ortiz did not record a hit in 1999, but he reached base at a 200 clip, walking 5 times and striking out 12 times. Ortiz returned to the field for his first 100-plus game season of, the, of his career in, in 2000 after an injury-riddled 1999 season. In 2000, Ortiz played 130 games for the Twins, and he posted 478 plate appearances in his fourth big league season. In those 478 plate appearances, Ortiz hit for a then-career-best average at 282, in sample size, and he had also hit for 10 home runs along with adding 63 RBIs. Ortiz reached base at a 364 clip that year as he walks 57 times and struck out 81 times. Like 1999, a wrist injury limited Ortiz to just 89 games played in the 2001 season, but in those 89 games, David had posted 347 plate appearances. In those 347 plate appearances in the 2001 season, Ortiz hit for a 234 average where he had first displayed his crazy power, hitting for 18 home runs while driving in 48 runs. Ortiz reached base at a 3 
324 clip in 2001 where he walked 40 times and struck out 68 times. Ortiz's last year with the Twins would come in 2002 where he played 125 games, the second most in his career to that point. Ortiz had 466 plate appearances in those 125 games, and in 466 plate appearances, David hit for a 272 average, adding 20 home runs and 75 RBIs. Ortiz reached base at a 339 clip in 2002 where he walked 48 times and struck out 87 times. Ortiz had then finished his six-year career tenure with the Twins, where in those six years, Ortiz played in 455 games, posting 1,693 plate appearances, and also hitting for a 266 average, while homering 80, 58 times and driving in 238 runs. Ortiz also reached base at a 348 clip in his Twins career, walking 186 times and striking out 339 times. Ortiz's time with the Twins was finally finished, and the next team that he signed is where he would stay for the rest of his career. Following the 2002 season, the Minnesota Twins released David Ortiz to avoid being taken to arbitration and to also make room for Matthew LaCroix. After being released on January 22, 2003, Ortiz was just having a difficult time finding a new team. Nobody wanted a below-average first baseman except for the Boston Red Sox. Ortiz ended up signing a one-year contract worth $1.25 million with the Boston Red Sox, and then I guess they say the rest is history. The legend in the making had officially signed with Boston, and Ortiz would make his Red Sox debut in the 2003 season. Ortiz's first season as a member of the Red Sox came in 2003. In the 2003 season, Ortiz appeared in 128 games for the Red Sox, which was two games shy of the most he had played in his season before. In those 128 games in his first season with the Red Sox, Ortiz posted 509 plate appearances. And in those 509 plate appearances, Ortiz hit for a 288 average, belting 31 home runs and adding 101 RBIs. David reached base at a 369 clip during the 2003 season, and he had walked 58 times while striking out 83 times. In just his first year with the Red Sox, Ortiz finished fifth in MVP voting in the American League, and once the Red Sox gave Ortiz another one-year deal following the 2003 season, this time for $4.6 million, starting in 2004, the legend of Big Poppy would be born. The second year that David played with Boston was the 2004 season, and in 2004, we're going to talk about something different. Instead of going over his regular season stats, we're going to talk about the 2004 playoff run that Ortiz and the Red Sox went on. The first use for the Red Sox in the 2004 playoffs was in the ALDS against the AL West champion Anaheim Angels. The Red Sox ended up sweeping the Angels, winning the series 3-0 and clinching the series via a David Ortiz walk-off two-run home run in extra innings. The Ortiz homer propelled the Red Sox to the ALCS against their bitter rival, the New York Yankees. The Red Sox started the series in the worst way possible losing the first three games to the Yankees and in a 3-0 hole before they knew it. No MLB team had ever come back to win a series when down 3-0, but that didn't stop the Red Sox, as they won both Games 4 and Games 5 in Boston, Game 4 via a David Ortiz two-run home run, and Game 5 due to Ortiz sending Johnny Damon racing home from an RBI single. He also sent the series racing back to New York for a Game 6, where they did the impossible. Boston won both Games 6 and 7, capping off the improbable comeback and advancing to the World Series. Ortiz was named the ALCS MVP. After the comeback, Boston then went on to sweep the Cardinals in the World Series, ending the curse of the Bambino. Ortiz had finally won his first World Series, and along with that, he finished fourth in American League MVP voting that year, along with being named to his first All-Star game and winning his first Silver Slugger Award. Ortiz would then proceed to begin a statistical reign of terror throughout baseball from 2005 to 2008. Ortiz followed up his 2004 season with an even better season in 2005, where he appeared in a career-high 159 games, posting 713 plate appearances that year. In those 713 plate appearances, Big Poppy hit for a 300 average, hitting 47 home runs along with driving in 148 runs. Ortiz reached base at a 397 clip that season, and he added on 102 walks and 124 strikeouts. David finished second in American League MVP voting in 2005, and he was also named to his second All-Star team along with winning his second Silver Slugger. The crazy part of about all of this was that he was still getting better, as Big Poppy arguably had the best season of his career in 2006, where he played in 151 games and he had appeared at the plate 686 times. In those 686 plate appearances, Ortiz hit for a 287 average, but the craziest part is this, he went off for an astronomical 54 home runs along with adding 137 RBIs. Big Poppy also reached base at a 413 percentage in 2006, and he had walked a crazy 119 times and struck out 117 times. Yes, more walks and strikeouts. To the shock of many, Ortiz did not win MVP in 2006, and he had placed third in the voting, but he was named to his third All-Star team, and he had also won his third Silver Slugger. While the 2007 season that Ortiz had wasn't as good as the season he had in 2006, it was still a crazy season nonetheless, where he played in 149 games, posting 667 plate appearances, and in those 667 plate appearances, Ortiz hit for a career-best 332 average, adding 35 home runs and 117 RBIs. The craziest part about his 2007 season is that David reached base on a monstrous 445 clip, and 
also walking 111 times and striking 103 times. Yes, again, more walks than strikeouts. Ortiz capped off the 2007 season by winning his second World Series ring while also finishing fourth in American League MVP voting and again being named to his fourth consecutive All-Star team along with his fourth consecutive Silver Slugger. In 2008, Ortiz only played 109 games due to reoccurring wrist injuries, but he still posted 491 plate appearances nonetheless. With those 491 plate appearances, Ortiz hit for a 264 average, adding on 23 home runs and 89 RBIs. He also reached base at a 369 clip in 2008, while walking 70 times and striking out 74 times. Ortiz was named to his fifth All-Star team in 2008 and came out one and came one game shy of going back to the Fall Classic for the second consecutive year. 2004 to 2008 was a career-defining stretch for Ortiz, where in the five years combined, David hit for a 298 average, mashing 200 home runs and driving in 630 runs. Ortiz also reached base at a crazy 403 clip while walking 477 times and striking out 551 times. After a picture-perfect years 2-6 through six with the Red Sox, Ortiz would then look to continue his success from 2009 to 2012. In the month of March in 2006 and 2009, David Ortiz played in the World Baseball Classic for the Dominican Republic. In 2006, Ortiz and the Dominican Republic lost in the semifinals, placing fourth in the tournament, where in 2009, the Dominican Republic lost in the first round of the tournament, placing ninth. Ortiz contemplated playing for the team again in 2017, but ultimately decided not to. Now that you know about another journey in the storied career of David Ortiz, let's now take a look at the 2013 season for Big Poppy and how Boston was our bleep city. The next year that Ortiz would play with Boston would be in 2009, and it would be his seventh year total with the team. In that year, Ortiz played in 150 games, appearing at the plate 627 times that year. In those 627 plate appearances in 2009, Ortiz hit for a 238 average, hitting 28 home runs and adding 99 RBIs. Big Poppy reached base at a 332 clip that year, and he had walked 74 times while striking out 134 times. While 2009 was the worst year of his now known 14 year Red Sox tenure, Big Poppy rebounded big time in 2010, where he played in 100. 45 games, posting 606 plate appearances in those games. In those 606 plate appearances in the 2010 season, Ortiz hit for a much improved 270 average, adding on 32 home runs along with 102 RBIs. Ortiz reached base on another crazy clip in 2010, this time being at 370, and he had walked 82 times and struck out 145 times. The now 34-year-old Ortiz was back in the All-Star game for the sixth time in his career in 2010 after not making it in 2009. Ortiz followed up his 2010 campaign by playing in 146 games in 2011 where he would appear at the plate 605 times. In those 605 plate appearances that year, Big Poppy hit for a 309 average while also blasting 29 home runs and adding 96 RBIs to his stat line. David reached base at a 398 clip in 2011 where he had walked 78 times and struck out 83 times. Ortiz was named a seven-time All-Star in the 2011 season and, his first, and he had won his first Silver Slugger award since 2007, making this Ortiz's fifth Silver Slugger received. 2012 was another injury-riddled season for Ortiz due to another reoccurring wrist injury and he was limited to only nine games that year. Despite only playing in 90 games, Ortiz still posted 383 plate appearances, and in those 383 plate appearances, David hit for a 318 average, hitting 23 home runs and driving in 60 runs. Ortiz reached base at a 415 clip in his small 90 game sample size, where he had walked 56 times and struck out 51 times. David was also named an All-Star for the 8th time in his career during the 2012 season. 2009 to 2012 was a stretch where Big Poppy had cooled off a bit, but nonetheless, in those 4 years combined, Ortiz hit for a 281 average, belting 112 home home runs along with driving in 357 runs. Big Poppy also reached base at a 376 clip during the four-year stretch and he had walked 290 times while striking out 413 times. Before we get into the season that David had in 2013, we're first going to mention something else that Ortiz took part in. This is our city. Not only did the 2013 season end up meaning a lot for Boston sports, but it also meant a lot for the city of Boston as well. On April 15, 2013, the finish line of the Boston Marathon was bombed. There were multiple casualties and a few victims. The next time the Red Sox returned home to Fenway Park, Ortiz delivered his infamous This Is Our City speech, which brought the crowd to its feet. The Red Sox went on to rally behind the city and end up winning the 2013 World Series, making an Ortiz's third career ring. Overall, Ortiz played in 137 games in the 2013 season, and in those 137 games, he posted 600 plate appearances. In those 600 plate appearances, Big Poppy hit for a 309 average, belting 30 home runs and driving in 103 runs. Ortiz reached base at a 395 clip in 2013, and he had walked 76 times and struck out 88 times. During this season, Ortiz was named a nine-time American League All-Star, and he was awarded his sixth Silver Slugger Award, and he had also placed 10th in American League MVP voting. Following the 2013 season, David would then go on to play three more seasons in the major leagues, which we will now cover in one section. 
The 2014 season saw Ortiz play in 142 games, and in those 142 games, he posted 602 plate appearances. In those 602 plate appearances, the Red Sox icon hit for a 263 average, clobbering 35 home runs while adding 104 RBIs. Big Poppy reached base at a 355 clip in 2014, where he had walked 75 times and struck out 95 times. Ortiz didn't win any awards during the 2014 season, and he would look to turn that around in 2015, where David played in 146 games that year. In those 146 games, Big Poppy appeared at the plate 640. 14 times, and in those 614 plate appearances, Ortiz hit for an average of 273, once again, mashing a ton of home runs, this time 37 of them, and he also drove in 108 runs on top of that. David reached base at a percentage of 360 in the 2015 season, and he had walked 77 times while striking out 95 times. While once again, David didn't win any awards in the 2015 season, he received one single MVP vote this year, placing him 28th in the MVP race. The final season of Big Poppy's career was in 2016, and man, let's just say that Ortiz went out with a bang. In his final season of 2016, Ortiz played in 151 games, his most since 2006, and in those 151 games, he posted 626 plate appearances. In the final 626 plate appearances of the storied career of David Ortiz, the Red Sox icon hit for a crazy 315 average, mashing 38 home runs while driving in 127 runs, the most in both categories since the 2006 season. Ortiz had reached base at a crazy 401 clip in his final season, which was his highest since 2011, and he ended up walking 80 times and striking out 86 times. The Red Sox legend ended his career by being named to his 10th and final American League All-Star team, winning his 7th Silver Slugger Award and placing 6th in American League MVP voting. Ortiz went out with a bang in his final three seasons, and in those three seasons combined, David hit for a 284 average, mashing 110 home runs along with 339 RBIs. Ortiz reached base at a 372 clip in his final three seasons, and he had walked 232 times while striking out 276 times. What we're now going to do is take a look at the final career statistics for Big Poppy and also running down his awards and accomplishments. The legendary career of David Ortiz was now over, and man, he ended up having quite the career. In his storied 20-year career, Ortiz played in a career 2,408 games, appearing at the plate a crazy 10,091 times. And in those 10,000-plus plate appearances, Big Poppy hit a career average of 286, hitting 541 home runs, which ranks 17th on Major League Baseball's all-time home run list, and he also drove in an astonishing 1,768 runs, which ranks 22nd in Major League Baseball history. Ortiz reached base at a career 380 clip, and he walked a career 1,319 times, and he had struck out a career 1,750 times. At the end of his career, Ortiz was named an All-Star 10 times, a Silver Slugger recipient 7 times, oh, and a three-time World Series champion. A Hall of Fame career for a soon-to-be official Hall of Famer. We're now going to hear from some other Red Sox media teams, and we're going to hear their thoughts and some of their best memories of the soon-to-be Hall of Famer, David Ortiz. The beautiful part of David Ortiz's career is that he was here for so long that as a 25-year-old, I don't remember the Red Sox before him, but he was still there as I became a much more diehard and knowledgeable fan as I got older. So I would say my favorite single memory of David Ortiz has to be when I was a little bit older, I was at game two of the 2013 ALCS when he hit that game time grand slam. It was the most incredible crowd moment I've ever seen. People were throwing their popcorn, their beers, their peanuts, everything was just, it was a free for all because everyone was so excited. But I have to say, when I think of David Ortiz, I think of being a little kid going to Fenway Park with my dad. And I remember, I, I don't know if it's actually true or not, but I used to, I was like my first 18 games and I, I used to you know, tell my dad, he's hit a home run every single time that we've been here together. It's like he's 18 for 18 and I'm sure it wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't quite that, but that just speaks to David Ortiz's true greatness is that I could go to Fenway Park 15 to 20 times and feel like he was gonna hit a home run every single time I showed up to the park because he always showed up. What's going on? This is Corbin over at Red Seat Radio. Shout out to Grandstand Production for having me on this video. It's a great idea. They asked me to share a personal story about my experience with David Ortiz being a Red Sox fan. So I'm going to give you guys two. One is an extremely personal one, and the other one is something that happened in his career that I'll remember forever. The first one is that me and my mom love to go to Red Sox games together. It's how I became a Red Sox fan, which through my mother. And one of the things we would do is try to get down there once a month. Now, we always stayed to the end of games. That was just our thing, right? Regardless of whether the Red Sox were getting blown out or they were winning by 30, 30 runs, we always stayed to the end. Now, there was one singular game in particular where my mom was working overnight. The Red Sox were losing, I believe it was by six at that point, And we were like, okay, 
why don't we go home? My mom will catch a few Z's. I can go to bed for school in the morning. It's fine, whatever. We leave the game, and the second we get out of that stadium, because it took us a little bit to get out, the Red Sox had scored three runs, and David Ortiz was up with the winning run at first base, and he hits a bases-clearing double to win the game. Because that's just David Ortiz, right? The most clutch player in history, the most clutch Red Sox player in history, the best, the greatest Red Sox player in history, walked that game off, and I missed it. <laughs> I missed it because we wanted to beat traffic. And from there on, we have never missed a single inning of any game we've ever been to ever again. I will refuse to leave a game regardless of the score because of that moment, because of David Ortiz. Now, the second one is just my favorite career moment. And the, my favorite career moment will always be the 2013 ALCS where the Red Sox were facing the Detroit Tigers and David Ortiz hit that grand slam to walk it off. Again, David Ortiz, clutchest hitter of all time. It's something that I will remember forever. That was the most special Red Sox World Series to me, and I think to a lot of Red Sox and Boston fans in general. And David Ortiz was the face of that movement. And David Ortiz is just simply the best. He deserves this a million percent. I don't care what Yankee fans say. I don't care what anyone says. David Ortiz deserves the Hall of Fame. So congratulations, Big Poppy. Again, shout out to Grandstand Productions. Great idea. See you guys later. Um, I think Karabas said it once, and I agree with it. Ted Williams is probably the best player in base in in the team's history. David Ortiz is the most important. He completely yeah. changed the culture of this team. Sure. The, what is your most iconic David? Your favorite David Ortiz memory? School in 2013 when we won the World Series. Senior, like the day of that game, like they had lost game one. The day of that game. Got into school at like seven in the morning, and someone was like, "We found tickets for like a hundred and fifty-five bucks, or however much it was, right? Like, do you want to go?" And of course, I wanted to go. If tickets were one hundred and fifty-five, I think I had like one hundred and fifty-three dollars in my bank account at the time, and I was saving up to go away to college, go to go to UMass, just to have something, you know, stored away for when I'm living on my own. David Ortiz, obviously, he gets a cookie. And obviously he does something with that. You all know what happened in that game. And obviously the, the, the roof erupts. And there's no roof at Fenway, but the roof would have erupted if there was a roof there. People go nuts. Stand up. Um, so mine, I have two like distinct uh, David Ortiz memories, but they were both from the 2013 playoffs. Game two of the ALDS against the Rays. He hit two bombs off David Price. Um, I was there for that. And the second one, looked like in person looked like it went like 600 feet into the corner <laughs> they won that game and then the other memory i have is game two of the 2013 world series which they lost however uh ortiz hit a two-run home run i think in the sixth off waka a uh, place i've never seen well at that point i had never seen fenway like erupt like it did he, he went the other way over the monster um people were like hugging straight i mean hugging strangers it was crazy um that gave them the lead. Uh, Craig Breslow then blew it and salty old salty threw the ball down the third baseline. I mean, for me personally in person, uh, I mean, I feel like I told the story recently, um, but the phone game at Camden yards. Oh yeah. Of course. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. the one for me. Um, God, I mean, I have countless memories of him hitting home runs at Oriole park. Uh, I couldn't tell you like how many home runs I saw him hit there, but yeah. Who cares though when you're going up against the phone? Yeah, no, I mean the phone is the phone's iconic. It's, cra it's crazy to me that he's going into the Hall of Fame already. That makes me feel so old. I didn't think uh, I, I didn't think say... yeah, it makes you feel washed up. I didn't think it was gonna be first ballot, honestly, in my heart of hearts. I, I, I thought it was first ballot. Second or third. I thought yeah. it should have been first ballot, and I'm glad they got it right, but I did not think that they were gonna once, jump right. Actually, away. once Edgar got in, I, then I figured he would be first ballot. And that's it. When he retired, David Ortiz went down as not only one of the greatest baseball players that's ever played the game, but he's also arguably the greatest clutch hitter of all time. It's crazy to think about the fact that a one-year deal back in 2003 with the Boston Red Sox turned into a 14-year tenure with the team that was filled with a lifetime worth of memories. Big Poppy impacted not only the sport of baseball, but people all over the world from all walks of life. From all this here at Grandstand Productions, we hope that you enjoyed this production. Hopefully, it also prepares you to watch David Ortiz be immortalized with baseball's greats on Sunday. Congratulations, David. David Ortiz.